November is here, and with November we have new release of Hope Assistant. This one, 2023.11. Let's see what all the new integrations are in the latest release of Hope Assistant, what are the changes to some existing, and what are the improvements that you can see both in the inside, but also on the outside in the UI of Home Assistant. To-do list for this video was very long. So let's get cracking. Although there are a lot of things to do in this video, first we will start by saying once again that this video has been recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant. At the time of the recording the latest beta version is beta 2. There may be some changes with the final release, but more or less what you see here should be the experience you get in the new release of Home Assistant. But as we already know that there are a lot of things to do in this release, let's get started with the new entity in Home Assistant. The new entity is called to-do, and you can have multiple to-do entities, for example, shopping list, to-do list, or whatever list you want to create. And this is really something that the users have been asking for some time. I know, I released a video on the shopping list that was already included in Home Assistant about two years ago, and there were a lot of comments that people wanted to create lists. So we now have lists. They are not actual lists because, according to the standard, this needs to be called to-do, and it has its own specification, so things you see here are aligned with the to-do specification that is widely available and that a lot of other applications can use. Which is also important because this is one of the things that I will be showing you in a couple of seconds or minutes, depending on how fast I talk, and that is the integration with outside to-do programs. But that also means that we now have to-do lists on the left navigation bar instead of shopping lists. And here you can have multiple lists. For example, this one is shopping list, although actually it's more of a to-do list, but you get the point. You can create multiple, you can have one for the shopping, one for the things you need to do, you can automate them with the service calls, etc. If you have previously used internal shopping lists, they will be converted to the new entity to-do.shoppinglist. And this is your default shopping list. But as I said, you can create additional lists. For example, this one will be to do. And now you have a new list where you can add things. As I mentioned, this is not just a UI thing. This is also a service thing. That means that if we go to developer tools, services, to do, we can create to-do list item, we can delete a to-do list item, or we can update the to-do list item. One of the best examples is to create an item. This is something that you can also implement inside your automations. We will choose entity to-do list, summary will be get haircut. Status can be either not completed or completed, which for this case it should be not completed, and we call a service. If we now go to to-do lists, in to-dos, we have a new task get haircut. So you can play with those service calls for to-do lists from within your automations, scripts, etc. One additional thing that you can do, of course, is, as I mentioned, integrate with the external applications. Currently, those external integrations are Todoist and Google Tasks. Go to Settings, Integrations, Add Integration, Google, and select Google Tasks. If you're interested into this one, I will create a separate video on it because this one also requires Google Developer Account, some tweaking, some external settings, some internal settings to get it working with the Home Assistant. Now let's look at something else that has been done with tile cards. And tile cards have received a lot of love in the latest couple of releases. So if you are using tile cards in your UI, you will be glad to hear that the things have expanded. If we click on three dots on any of the existing tiles, go to edit, we already had features available. For example, target temperature, preset modes, HVAC modes. And in the previous release, we've seen how you can disable or enable some or all of the functionality. Also in the previous release, we received option to replace icons with the drop-down menus. But now you can also add state content. For example, last changed, current temperature, 
offset, preset, etc. Depending on the entity type and also depending on the available attributes, you can add those attributes to your tile card and create more informative cards if you like. And yes, this also works with the simple light cards. Any of the attributes can be pulled and displayed in the same tile card. One of the things that I don't cover that much with my channel is the matter. Unfortunately, that's because a lot of devices or device types are currently not supported and matter is still not working as it should. But a couple of days or a week ago, a new version of the matter standard was released. This one is version 1.2 and it brings a lot of new devices that were previously not supported in the matter standard to the table. Now, you should be able to control vacuums and some other devices that were so far not available in the standard itself. But what that means for you? At this point, actually nothing. We do not know of any manufacturer that is currently implementing or that has said that the implementation of the version 1.2 has started. That meaning that Home Assistant itself now has implemented version 1.2 of the standard and it can support those devices when those devices become available or when the current devices receive firmware updates. One of the first things I think that people will like to see here is vacuums, but yeah, a lot of companies have said that either they are not currently planning to implement that version or that they are currently not working on the implementation. But what this means for you as a Home Assistant user? Actually, this is a very good news. Since Home Assistant is one of the first companies in the world that has implemented version 1.2 of the standard, some companies that are already working on the implementation of the standard in their devices are using Home Assistant as a test platform. That means that if the new version of the firmware is released and if it is 1.2 version, those devices should have already been tested with the Home Assistant. Yes, you didn't think that Home Assistant would become a testing platform, but it's also good news for all of us that are end users. If you have been using Energy Dashboard and my is currently funky on this recording system, you know that we had option to select dates, ranges, etc. Also to compare data between two different ranges. That has changed a bit and it has been aligned with the things how Google does it or Google Date Selector. If we click on the calendar, we have option to select ranges like this. Select it and then you will see data for that specific range. But you can also use compare data and that compare functionality will then take into account the dates you have selected with the date picker and provide alternative or previous range of date that matches the one that you have selected. Now, this allows more streamlined energy dashboard in your UI. But besides date ranges, you can also click and select today, yesterday, this week, this month, this quarter and this year. There is also update to conditional cards. If you haven't used so far conditional cards, don't worry, I haven't also. But this update brings a lot of new things that look very interesting and promising for some nice UI options. For example, let's look at this climate card. If we wrap it out with conditional cards plus conditional, add condition, entity numeric state, balcony, temperature below 19. And for the card, we add tile, climate, Let's add preset and target temperature. What we now have is condition when this tile card will be shown. That means that this card will only be visible if the temperature is below 19 degrees. And what that allows you? It allows you to automatically declutter your UI. You don't need heating when the temperature is above 20 degrees because the difference between the internal and external temperature is just too small. If you create a conditional card when the temperature is above 15 degrees and outside temperature is 15 degrees or above, then this card will be shown. 
such as this one here. If we set it to below 50, this card will not be visible. But that's not all. For example, we can edit and add condition that the user of the system has to be BD Thinker. Let me just tweak this state here so that this condition is met. Click Save, done. That means that only me, if the user matches the user logged in into UI, will see this card if the other condition is met. But again, that's not all. If you want to hide something and really, really hide it, I don't know what, but if you want to hide it, you can add additional condition. For example, screen size mobile. And that means that this card will be seen only on my mobile phone, only to me as a user, and only when the condition of numbers, number condition we've set, is met. I don't see it here, because the first condition is met, the second condition is met, but the third one, which is a screen condition, is currently not met, not at least on this device here. That allows you to create uh, semi-dynamic cards, where some cards may be visible based on the condition, others may be based on the user, and third one, it may be based on the screen you are accessing that UI from. And no, at least for now, it's not possible to play with the preset sizes. Mobile, tablet, desktop, and wide. There is also one additional change on how you can restart your Home Assistant. If you click on Restart, we already know about this quick reload and restart Home Assistant. If you have enabled Advanced Options, and you do that by clicking your icon next to Name and selecting Advanced Mode, now in Advanced Options you have one additional option, and that is Restart Home Assistant in Safe Mode. What will this do to your system? When the system restarts, it will disable all and every custom component, custom integration, front-end module that is not part of the original Home Assistant. This is a great tool, especially if you have any kind of errors or want to see if this is error in some of the custom components you are using or this error has been introduced by the latest version of Home Assistant. By disabling everything, restarting in a plain vanilla Home Assistant, you will also see the impact of those other components on the performance of your system. If you still have an error in your system with the safe mode on, then you know that the bug is in the Home Assistant and you can create a bug report. This is great for everybody who has ever created issues on the GitHub because one of the questions always from the developers was, are you sure that this is not a custom component issue or that this is not something that you have added on top of Home Assistant? This way, now, we can exclude everything that is not original, test the system with the original configuration, and then restart in a normal mode. Home Assistant devs are not only implementing things that Home Assistant users will benefit. There were a lot of things that have been implemented inside Home Assistant or projects around Home Assistant, such as ESP Home, that have later on moved to other projects. For example, BLE firmware that was custom built to make it easier to get stuff inside Home Assistant can also be used by third parties or other programs. Same goes for the ESP Home web interface that is used to program devices for the first time over the web without needing any kind of a hardware or setup on your PC. You can do that, compile on the air, transfer via the USB cable and have a ready-made component that works with Home Assistant. And this is where this new update really nicely fits. There is something called improv. What improv really is, is the ability to send credentials to a device via the BLE. While following projects have adopted this, for example, WLED cannot use this functionality as it has memory constraints. But one of the programs that is using it, of course, is ESP Home. That allows you for, for example, if RoomSense or Lewis's present sensor arrive with that functionality, you buy it through the shop, you bring it home, then you use this page to locally push the Wi-Fi credentials to that device. And that's it. That's the only thing that you really need to configure. Previously, we had to separately set up the Wi-Fi credential as part of the onboard process. This now streamlines that and allows you to quickly have your system and the new sensors working out of box. You now have option to configure script fields from within your UI, which is great for all of you that are playing with the fields. Fields allow you to define the variables and those variables can then be passed when you are calling a script or something similar. 
one additional thing that was added was a country selector. And this country selector can either be used in a blueprints if you're creating blueprints and sharing them with the community. But also, once again, you can also use it with that new script editor mentioned above. And when we're already talking about the fields variables, let's also look at this one here. It allows you to check type in your templates. For example, if variable is a list, do something, or if variable is a time, do something else. You can read more about that on the link provided in the release notes. Plus, of course, there are other noteworthy changes, but we will not be going through all of them because the list, the one that you see here, is not complete. There will be some additional noteworthy changes that will be included in the final release of Home Assistant. And as far as the new integrations, we already mentioned a couple of them. And one we already mentioned was Google Tasks. It allows you to integrate your Google Tasks with the new to-do list in your Home Assistant. The next one we also mentioned is improved BLE, local to-do list and to-do list integration itself was mentioned. Plus we have Tami 4 Edge and Edge Plus if you are using Tami water boilers, etc. Plus, as always, we have a lot of breaking changes. So please read on the breaking changes as it can impact your system. Although we all know that if you do have a breaking change in your system, that shouldn't break your system at that release but instead you will receive a repair warning in your system where it will tell you how long you have until that issue becomes a real breaking issue. So always fix your repairs inside Home Assistant. And we must say farewell to a couple of integrations. 8 sleep has been removed because the API has changed and it's currently not accessible anymore. IMAP email content has been removed. It is now available through the IMAP integration and the shifter has been removed because the platform is closed and it's no longer available. What are your thoughts about the latest release of Home Assistant? What do you think is the best thing? What have you been waiting for? Except for to-do lists, everybody was waiting for to-do lists. And also, is there any specific thing that you would like to see in more detail? For example, the integration with the Google Tasks. Home Assistant tries to play along with the standards. If there is a standard for calendar, if there is a standard for email, if there is a standard for to-do lists, it will try to implement the standard in itself, while some other manufacturers like to implement their own standards. And we all know that just based on the power cables, we need to charge our phones, watches, etc. If you have any thoughts on things that should be improved in future, or if there are any things that you have been really waiting for a long time that have been now implemented Home Assistant, drop me a line down in the comment section below. Let me tick one item off my to-do list. I must also thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have been supporting me some for over three years. Thank you all for becoming a YouTube channel members. But let's not forget all of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, but also commented on my videos. It really means a lot. Don't forget to give this video a like, because it tells Google that this video was good and that it should show it to more people. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and getting something there. I will be seeing you next time with a video on LimpTech Presence Sensor. Until then, bye bye and have fun.